at Arsenal in January 1989. Not only were Spurs the opposition, but the newly refurbished Highbury clock was unveiled. Commentary comes from Alan Parry. Arsenal then, second in the table now, a point behind Norwich. But perhaps they will feel it more significant that a win today would put them 12 points clear of Liverpool. So we're all set then. Arsenal will start this 104th league derby in North London. Arsenal in the white shorts, attacking from right to left. Long ball from Richardson. Butters the number two for Tottenham. Thomas is header. And Butters in there again. Merson. Rowcastle is Arsenal seven. Merson let it run and a fine effort from Marwood. Mims happy to see that one go over the bar. It was a good opportunist piece of thinking by Brian Marwood. saying that uh, his team has improved 75% from this stage a year ago. It's that last 25% that's going to be so difficult to achieve. Allen. Now Fennick. In towards Walsh. And Rocastle defending well for Arsenal. Terrific run made by Merson in the outside right position. Certainly he's one of those players perhaps that the uh, coaches and people in the game appreciate his qualities more than some spectators and certainly one of his qualities is his running off the ball which could be very important today. He's playing for handball and the referee in fact has upheld that claim. Lukic came for a difficult ball. Bergson heading it goalwards. Well, what a moment that could have been for the young Icelandic international. It's a corner. Spurs were practicing their corners in a uh, light training session this morning. I feel they could profit from them. But not this time. Headed away by Adams. Walsh. Winterburn is very quick. Wobbles. A lot of players in the middle waiting for the cross. And so too is Arsenal's Adams. Fennick. Allen, Thomas, the one-two didn't quite come off. Terry Venables, modern manager with modern thoughts, and making notes of anything he sees going wrong, or perhaps even right. Waddle got three, but the offside flag goes up. So it makes a change for a Tottenham player to find himself the victim of offside. Not quite a lot to uh, Arsenal so far in this game. With many offsides in, it's uh, obviously interrupting the flow. Well, there's nothing more annoying, obviously, for the football fan or whoever happens to be sitting at home watching this one. The uh, offside does annoy you, but uh, Arsenal do play it quite well. Bergson drops though for uh, Thomas and Marwood. The ball in. Merson. from nothing. Paul Merson's marksmanship, absolutely superb. Well, I've been saying about getting the ball in from, from the flank, and it was a splashing ball in. 
and of course Smith is deadly in there, a little flick on. We have to give Mercer credit because he's running away from goal, but still managed to turn and get across the goalkeeper and into the far corner. Super strike. Arsenal in front then, Paul Merson's eighth goal of the season. So Graham watching from the director's box, here's managing director Ken Fryer sitting next to him, and it looks as though he's uh, going to use even more modern technology than a notebook and pen. He's on the telephone to offer his instructions to Theo Foley down on the bench as assistant. He may be phoning a wife to say the home early. Free header allowed there for Merson. Smith gives it him back. Bergson intercepts. And then loses out and gives away the free kick. Sipping Rotassel in order to atone for his own error. Retrieve the ball. Bobby Wynn is certainly in no hurry to uh, let Arsenal get on with the free kick. Wynn awaits. Marwood with the shot in the end. And then Merson got on the end of it, and Smith is in there. The linesman is flagging, the goal may not stand, and in fact, won't. Quick thinking by the Arsenal front man, but the linesman had signalled before the ball hit the back of the net. Marwood curling it in. Merson's header, and clearly bowled in an offside position. Waddle let it run. And Waddle is there again with Walsh. And Waddle... The referee had a long look and did not point to the penalty spot. And I must say, Ron's instant appraisal of that situation was that a penalty should have been the outcome. But no penalty given. Spurs battle on with Allen. Three minutes and a half time. That was a crucial talking point. And Bold wins it. Winterburn. Marwood. But Paul Allen has it, and now Waddle for Spurs. Great run has been made by Mitchell Thomas, peeling away from the Arsenal defenders. And Bergson in support on the right. Two minutes to half time. Arsenal lead 1 0. <laughs> Walsh for Spurs and the linesman had flagged again for offside well certainly John Lukic must have been a relieved man when referee Seville uh, allowed play to run on here Waddle through Lukic came now does that constitute a penalty? I would say yes well if that, if that was the penalty kick I have never seen one I mean that was a blatant penalty He's John sitting on the fence as ever, but I've got to agree with him. And of course, the referee, it has to be said, doesn't have the benefit of that kind of angle or that kind of second uh, look at it. But Spurs will feel agreed. Waddle with the kick. A minute remaining in the first half, Arsenal leading 1-0. Walsh is there, the Spurs doing well here and holding them all off. Stewart turns it back, a hit bold. And the Tottenham fans wanted the penalty again. Here's Waddle. No castle for Arsenal. It's been a good period for Spurs because Arsenal have been pinned back in their own half now for ten minutes or so. Marwood, Bergson. And Fennick to go back. There's the half time whistle. Who's 
from the Tottenham fans who feel that they should have had a penalty. With Bet Victor's Golden Goal, you get a free weekly prediction to guess the game's first scorer and the minute it scored. You can win serious money. Okay. I've guessed the player, but what minute should I go for? Let's ask the Liverpool manager what he thinks, shall we? Statistically, most of the goals are scored in the 45th and in the 90th minute. But actually, the average time for the first goal is the 31st minute. But this weekend, who knows? First goal wins. Time I won't go without a fight. She outfoxed me and I never saw it coming. But I was Corvo before I was the royal protector. I don't know what grand scheme you've got underway, Delilah. But I'm coming to put you in your grave. So it begins. Dishonored 2. Pre-order now. It's the spin of the wheel, the turn of the card, the press of the button. Experience the ease of it all with Betfair Casino. Join now for your free £10 casino bonus. substitutions made by either side as far as I can see and it spurs in the white shirt to kick off attacking from right to left Stewart Richardson for Arsenal I'm feeling a thing all around us that uh, the game has been so fast and frenetic that uh, no one has really settled down to play the kind of football they're capable of but I guess that's typical of a derby match particularly one on which so much really hangs Especially from Arsenal's point of view. After today, by the way, they've got 11 home games in the league and seven away. And that really ought to place them in the driving seat as far as the championship is concerned. That's something they haven't won for 18 years. Since George Graham, their manager, was part of the double winning team. Fennick looking for Stewart. Well met again by Adams. Marwood. Winterberg. Smith with a little header. Good play from Fennick. Intercepted. And then find Waddle. Waddle perhaps Tottenham's best hope of getting back in this game. Here's Walsh. Thomas dispossesses him. Marwood. And again, so much space for Winterburn to move into on the left. Thomas. Marwood. I think felt he moved into an offside position then and seemed to run the opposite way to the ball. And it was onside. Alan for Spurs. And that's not the way to get uh, Chris Wobble into the game. Leary forward. The name is one for him though. Bergson back to Fennick. <laughs> Led by Stewart. Bergson. Walsh. It's a good ball for Allen. Stewart taking up a position in the middle, and Allen wins the corner. And we'll go over to take the kick, and a big central defender, Guy Butters, there he is, just went through the pick to the number two, coming forward onto the near post, with Mitchell Thomas. But met by Smith. Came back in and the linesman immediately saw an infringement. Free kick to Arsenal. Spurs really uh, 
haven't seen enough of Arsenal this season. They played them in the pre-season international tournament at Wembley in August and got thrashed 4-0. Lost 3-2 in the league game at White Hart Lane in September. And really could do with uh, evening up one or two old scores against their great rivals. There's Walsh. Win to burn though for Arsenal. Marwood. Good ball in. Oh no, a little bit too deep in fact. Smith came for it and then uh, went away. Tony Adams wondering if Bobby Mims can be beaten again because it surely will take a second goal to make this game safe. Spurs have done enough to suggest that they can get back into the match. Road castle for Arsenal. It's very, very hard to run with the ball in this midfield. Marwood, Thomas, giving away to Bergson. stuck to his job then and wouldn't allow Bergson an inch in which to manoeuvre. That was just netted in time under pressure from Smith. Allen finding Walsh. Waddle in space, unmarked in the middle and he's seen him! Waddle! Well, Lukic got there as Thomas went for the rebound. But what a marvellous piece of running by Waddle, who made 60, 70 yards to get into a scoring position then. Well, well spotted and well found by Walsh. Waddle has been started again wide on the left and really should have done better, should have hit the target with the initial header. That was a great chance. Dispossessed by Bold. Thomas, a lovely ball from Marwood in space here. Bergson racing back to try and cover the gap, and he's done so. And Arsenal have another point. Oh, the big number five going to the near post. He flicks it on dangerously. Bergson clear. Richardson. Intercepted though by Mitchell Thomas. Stewart is a long way forward for Spurs here, and he's seen him. That's not a bad ball. And Stewart in the end gets it. In towards Waddle! Well, Waddle has had two good opportunities in the space of a few minutes, both of them headers, and will be very frustrated he's missed again in. Well, again, it was a a lovely chance. I mean, he's only about, what, seven or eight yards out when he headed it. You know, I think any forward that, that plays in that position would say, well, you've got to certainly hit the target. Certainly, the North Bank will celebrate if Arsenal can beat their fierce rivals. And go back to the top of the league, of course. Walsh for Spurs, though, finds Stewart. Looking ball in, Mabbott came to meet it, and Lukic relieved to get away with that. Mabbott so good at stealing forward, almost unnoticed like that. And uh, Lukic had one eye on him as the cross came in from Stewart, and one on the ball. Just came off Mabbott. Lukic actually has been a little bit rocky today in a couple of crosses, hasn't he? I mean, he, he was late coming out for this one, and then when he did come, he just didn't get there. Mabbott got across the front of him there and just got a little flick on it. Free kick to Tottenham. Waddle was being fouled by Michael Thomas. Spurs have taken it quickly. Bergson. Walsh. Did well. And it drops for Stewart! What a miss. 
He will not look forward to seeing that one again on the video tonight. The most clear-cut opportunity of the whole game. Walsh did so well to find him. Took it down quickly and well. Only the goalkeeper to beat and straight at him. The other end, Merson for Arsenal. And he's gone into the gap. Here's Waddle of the Spurs. Too far ahead of Stewart. Well, they've been saying all season Spurs that their front men haven't been contributing enough goals. Today's proved that. They've certainly had the better, the better of the chances in the game, haven't they, Alan? They'll clear cut chances. And really, Stewart has had to score there. It was a tremendous chance. Mabatetta. And Rogasso with the acrobatic clearance. Here's Ferkler. Smith in hard. So was Merson. So was Butters. And Arsenal really hunting in packs in midfield to try and deny Venables and his Tottenham team. Here's Stewart again. Waddle couldn't control it. Run back by Mitchell Thomas, but in fact, it has gone off uh, him. So it's Arsenal's throw. George Graham anxiously eyeing his watch, knowing that they're just seconds away from victory. One last push, perhaps, by Spurs. Bennett lifts it in. Away by Adams. Butters intercepts at the other end. And Bergson keeping it in. That was a foul, I think, by Michael Thomas on Paul Allen, it was. So Spurs will throw everybody forward now for this free kick. And Venables, I'm sure, is telling them that. Delivered into the box will be the message. The Arsenal fans sweep in for the final whistle. And in it comes. Too close to Lukic. We're into the second minute of time that's been added. And all people waddle all the way back inside his own half. Referee's looking at his watch now as Mims kicks forward again. The crowd thought they'd heard the final whistle, well, not yet. Butters knocks it forward. Bowles header. Waddle. Mabbard intercepted. And then cleared by O'Leary. Merson for Arsenal. And support arriving from Thomas. And he finds him. Can he clinch it? In the dying seconds, Michael Thomas ensures victory. And the leadership of the first division for Arsenal. Well, Arsenal have ended with style. Paul Merson, who scored the first goal, did so well. Michael Thomas kept calm, 2-0. Always happens, doesn't it? You know, you're pressing away at one end, the opposition break away, and bang, 2-0. They've kicked off, but there won't be much time for any more football now, and Spurs know this is not to be their day. There's the final whistle. A little bit of icing on the cake from Michael Thomas. Arsenal battled hard, certainly didn't play as well as they did at Aston Villa, but Spurs didn't allow them to. Spurs had the chances, no question. They will talk about the penalty that never was. They will talk about the misses from Stewart and Waddle, but in the end, they've lost. The win took Arsenal back to the top of the table, and they'd finished the season as champions.